Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and we are on part five of the five-part fall-off series. Aren't we all excited? Okay, so in the part four, we did a custom sine wave fall-off using some nodes. And if you don't remember, we saved it as an assembly so we can reuse it whenever we wanted to. Like here, I've got a little push uh, operator on here, and I could just go over here to my assemblies and add my sine wave fall-off assembly that I made. And we'll take a look inside. It's just a fall off operator with some, uh, a couple other nodes, a measure distance, a matrix construct, and a channel waveform. And if you want to watch this video first, go ahead and do it. But you don't, you don't have to watch it before watching part five here, but um, it could be helpful, but it, it's not necessary. Anyway, this handful of nodes uh, create the sine wave fall off, and then we just um, plug the uh, graph connection into our tool pipe. And there we go, now we have sine wave fall off. There's a couple of channels here that we can mess with, like uh, amplitude, let me just press C for channel hall, frequency. And yeah, it's pretty cool, right? These can be animated and we have a sine wave fall off. And you can use this for modeling tools or deformer tools like this push or whatever you want. It's pretty sweet. And we're gonna do the same thing uh, that we did here, but with a curve. So I'm gonna unhook this and I'm gonna just delete this sine wave assembly. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to create a curve fall off is create a curve. So press N and we get an empty mesh item. And I'm just gonna rename that curve, C-U-R-V-E. And I'm going to select my curve tool, go to the top view, and I'm also gonna activate um, snapping. And then this doesn't have to be super precise or anything. Uh, we're just gonna snap a curve across the top of this. Snap, snap, snap does not have to be precise. Just need a curve. Boom, 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 and boom, got a curve across the top of our plane. And then I'm going to add that to the schematic down here. So add selected, there's our curve. Then I just need a couple more uh, nodes and we're in business. So first thing, I'm gonna get a curve probe so we can get some data from the curve. And then I'm gonna get a mate, uh, I'm sorry, a fall off operator that'll let us create our own fall off. And then I'm going to get a matrix construct just like uh, when we made the sine wave fall off here, matrix construct right there. And then I'm just gonna do a couple more things. On the fall off operator, I'm gonna right click and add channel. And if you look at the fall off operator channel here, we have all these different channels in the fall off operator. This item has lots of channels that we can use for our benefit. And we're gonna right click and add the position XYZ channel. There it is right there, XYZ position. And then lastly, I'm gonna right click on this and say separate channel. That just sort of tears that position off and I can move it over here because I think everybody's a little more comfortable with a left to right uh, flow of nodes. And then we'll just start hooking stuff up. So the curve goes into the curve um, graph input of the curve probe and the fall off operator position. Basically what this does is it's gonna cycle through every single point in this um, plane here. Every single point has an XYZ position, which is an array, right? A list of numbers, XYZ. But there's also a list of points. So a list of lists, uh, plural, it's hard to say, um, is a matrix. So if we plug this array into the input of the matrix construct, it makes a matrix, a list of each of the points and each of the coordinates for those points. And we can plug that into the matrix input position of this curve probe. What we're doing here is we're allowing the curve probe to sample points along the probe and compare them to points along the plane. So for instance, if the curve goes from 0% here to 100% finished here, these plane, these, let me just select my plane here. These points on the plane, these points on the plane, turn off snapping right here, are right around 0% of the way along the curve. These are about 50% of the way along the curve, and these are about 100% of the way along the curve. And we can use that to drive the fall off. Uh, in a similar fashion, these points down the middle are approximately zero distance from the curve, while the points over on the edge are on a one meter plane here about you know uh, half a meter or 0.5 away from that curve. And we're gonna use those uh, that data to drive the fall off. So if I uh, go over here to my curve probe and I just take distance and put it, plug it into weight, I am now um, attenuating this push here. Let me just take the push and push it up. And then when I plug in my fall off operator into the tool pipe, it's gonna be attenuated along the length of this curve. One last thing I wanna do on the curve probe is there's a couple of options and properties for type, parameter, and fraction. These are just two different ways of sort of um, analyzing the curve. We're gonna set it to fraction. It's gonna be a little more accurate. So set it to fraction. And then let's plug in the falloff operator into the tool pipe. And here you'll see 
because we have distance selected, if the points are zero distance from the curve, right down the middle here, they get zero of the effect of the push. Whereas if we go away from the curve and farther away in distance, we get a higher percentage of the push. And similar to percent, if I plug this into percent and go to the side here, you'll see the points at 100% get 100% of the push and the points at 0% get 0% of the push. You think, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, but we could do this with a linear fall off, you know, so why is this interesting? Well, you can do some things like if I take my curve here and just start moving it around, you see if I move it this way, it's flattening out, right? Because now everything beyond this point is getting 100% of that push. Same thing if I drag it this way, everything this way is getting 0%. Okay, well, that's kind of cool, I guess. But what else can we do with this? Well, let's go back to um, distance. And so we get this sort of V shape because if you're zero away from the curve, these points are zero uh, meters or millimeters from the curve, you get 0% of the push. Well, we can go to our um, fall off operator and it does have a gradient here. So we can sort of remap the values with this gradient. And we can also invert it like this. So it's sort of an upside down V. But um, let's just play with this gradient here a little bit. So first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, clamp off the ends, constant and constant, like this. So we just have this here. If I drag this uh, point in like this on the side, just sort of right click drag, you'll see I'm getting a bigger effect here. If I drag this down and drag this up, I should be getting the hump in the middle. I can sort of drag that in a little more. And then I can even like uh, middle click and add a point here. Let me just sort of push in a little bit and kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm sort of shaping this um, fall off into the sort of deformation that I want. So, all right, it's looking, starting to look a little more useful here. Greg, I think you're onto something. But here's where it gets um, really kind of cool. Let me just sort of uh, control click and drag here to press all these over into the, uh, smoosh them down a little bit. Get this a little bit nicer looking like this. Because this is a curve, I can, you know, do curve type things with it. In fact, I can grab some points of the curve here and just push them this way, right? Grab a couple more points of the curve and push them this way. Now it's like, oh, okay, I get it. This is actually pretty useful. This is not something I can do with a linear fall off or a spherical fall off or any of those kinds of fall offs. It's this cool sort of curve fall off, and it's easier to use and set up, honestly, than um, the spline fall offs in Moto, which are, well, quite frankly, just absolutely horrible, which is why I pursued this method here of creating a curve fall off. So, okay, this has started to look interesting, and I'll jump into another scene here in a second to show you how this is actually super useful. But before I do that, we just want to save this setup so we don't have to uh, recreate it every time. And to do that, we just create an assembly. And so I definitely want to unhook my curve because I don't want that as part of the assembly. I want to be able to hook up whatever curve I want to to it. And I'm going to unhook it from here. And I just want these nodes that we use to create um, this effect as part of the assembly. I can right click and say create assembly. We'll just call this um, curve fall off. Hit OK. And if I push the up arrow here, we'll see our workspace is where we were. Uh, but we also have this assembly now. If I double click it, I can go into the assembly. And here's all my nodes that I just uh, had been uh, I just moved in here you'll notice that I did put the position back in here I think I could probably uh, separate it back out here like it was before just like that for fun now we just need to be able to drag you know we want to input a curve right we want to hook up any curve we want to this we got to take this graph connection and for the inputs we just hold it over the plus sign and now we have an input for a curve and then the fall off operator is just um, this graph connection here that we plug into the tool pipe of a mesh operation or the fall off slot of a deformer. We just put that into the output and then we're good to go. If I go up here and I drag this curve fall off into my workspace and here it is over here. Let me just sort of drag it back in. Then I can just go back in and, and hook this back up, hook my curve up here and my fall off operator here and back where we were. So then you could save this. I would actually go in and go to my um, fall off operator and I would take this graph here and just uh, reset it. So this would be uh, you know, 100% and this would be 0% and this would be deleted and this would be uh, linear and this one would be 
linear, and both of these guys would be uh, linear, or however you want to make it. You can probably make it smooth, but we'll just save it like this, and then um, what you can do is just right click on your curve um, fall off assembly and say save assembly preset and you just save that in your folder. I have a Greg assembly folder that I just save these in and then you can reuse them, right? So pretty easy. Okay, so now that we have that saved, I could jump into another scene. This scene right here, I'm gonna hide the uh, plane really quick. Let me just click this down and hide my plane. So I've got a curve and I've got this um, little polygon plane in here called profile and I've got an empty mesh here called road and what I'm just going to do is add a uh, curve sweep operator into the um, this road empty mesh here and I'm just gonna set this up real quick so we're gonna for the path mesh we'll add our curve right here so we'll just do existing and curve and for our shape mesh we're gonna add our profile which is that little rectangle there and then in the curve sweep, we just want to make sure we set um, shape mesh to uh, or extrude shape to um, linked shape. And that'll bring in our, our profile there. And then we'll just increase the number of steps by pressing C in item mode and clicking and dragging. And there we go. And you also notice that it's um, inside out, so we can press flip. And, and here we've got a road, basically, essentially a road. And if I add selected and add the road into the uh, schematic here. You'll see how this is working. Here's our profile right there in the profile. Here's our curve right there. And let me just go back to um, advanced mode. And then our, uh, whoops, did I say advanced? I think I said advanced. It's not, not wanting to go to advanced. Now it's advanced. Okay. Um, okay, so what if we add a to our uh, road here with our curve sweep? What if we add a push just like we had in the last uh, scene there? We've got a push, and I can just grab my push handle and push it out like that. Looks good, right? And if I want to add a curve fall off, I'll just add that assembly we just created and saved so I don't have to recreate it from scratch. There's my curve fall off assembly. I just want that curve I'm using for the curve uh, sweep to be my um, input to the curve probe and the fall off operator to go to uh, the push tool pipe here. So fall off operator into push tool pipe. And there we go. So it is 0% of the curve. We got 0% of the push and near the end we have 100%. So you can see, okay, that's sort of interesting. You can make all kinds of cool stuff with this concept here. But we're going to take this um, a little bit further. I'm going to unhook the curve fall off from that. And I'm actually going to uh, bring the push back down to something sort of you know, more normal-ish, I guess. And turn this plane back on and turn on uh, this little tree shape here. And so, again, we're going to be using the curve fall off now as a fall off into a particle system. And what I'm going to do is just add a surface particle generator over here, surface particle generator. And the source surface will be the plane. And so it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little orange dots all over the plane now. You see them there. So we have surface particles all over the plane. And I'm going to add a replicator into the scene. And for the point source for the replicator is that surface particle generator we just created, all those little points. And for the prototype, I'm going to do that little red tree. And so we get something like this, like a billion little red trees everywhere. So. First of all, our service uh, particle generator is too dense, so average spacing was say 0.3, and um, let's say minimum spacing 0.2 or something like that. So a lot less dense. Okay, looking kind of good. And I'm going to drag all this stuff into the schematic. So we'll add selected, bring this down to the schematic. We've got a replicator, we've got our tree prototype, we've got our service particle generator, we've got our plane going into that. So here's our whole replicator setup. Now, let's um, do something fun, like let's add a particle sieve or sieve, particle sieve modifier, or is it sev? I'm going to say sieve. I guess it's a particle sieve. And we're going to use this to sieve on, instead of particle ID, we're going to sieve on a uh, fall off right here. And I'm going to plug in my curve falloff 
right here. I've got my curve and my fall off assembly, curve fall off assembly. And I'm going to plug this in to the fall off slot on the sieve modifier, sieve modifier, just like that. And going into my um, assembly, I want to use not percentage this time because here it's cutting off all the trees after 50%. I want to use distance from the curve, not percentage along the curve. Okay, so this is starting to look interesting. And what I want to do is hop back out here and back into our workspace, look at our Civ modifier. I want to say, um, I, want, I don't want to say if the condition is less than 0.5, I want to say in range. So I don't want it zero to one, I want like 0.2 to 0.5. And so something like this, maybe expand this out. So about 0.5 away from the curve, not all the way like that, or range min like that. And so we're growing trees. That tree is just a little big. Go to my replicator here and uh, scene scale, base scale, let's do like 50%. Um, and maybe bump up my density just a little, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Okay, there we go. But here we have trees that we're using a sev modifier and a range min, range max, and this curve probe with you know this the same curve that's making the road, and we're plugging that in um, using our distance from the curve on this plane, all these points distance from that curve, and we're using that fall off those fall off values to drive um, this particle sieve modifier, which then feeds the replicator. So now we have trees just around our road. And if I ever want to go in and change the curve, I could just grab a curve point here, and the road changes, but all the trees go with it, which is pretty cool. And you can layer these up. So you can do, you know, you can just change these, you know, range min, range max, or whatever you want to do there, and um, adjust how that's going to affect the, uh, um, uh, the trees or different types of vegetation you want to put in, and, and you can layer those effects out. Anyway, so yeah, uh, that's just a couple of different uses for the curve probe, um, both the distance from it and also the distance along the length of it. It's super useful, you know, make it. There's got to be a whole bunch more um, custom falloffs you can make with the falloff operator. I'm going to explore some things. And yeah, falloffs are such a cool part of Moto. They can plug into mesh operations. They can plug into deformers. They can plug into particle systems. They can plug into physics. They can plug into so many things. They're super useful. So it's really worth exploring. And I hope this series has been useful. Yum, yum.